Hi, so today we're going to prove that E is irrational. The first thing we're going to do is consider these two sequences, a series, sorry, AN and BN, right? And we can see that AN is essentially 1 over n plus 1 plus 1 over n plus 1 times n plus 2 plus 1 over n plus 1 times n plus 2 times n plus 3, etc, etc. And BN is 1 over n plus 1 plus 1 over n plus 1 squared plus 1 over n plus 1 cubed, etc, etc. We're first going to evaluate B of n. We're then going to show that A of n is between B of n and 0. And then we're going to consider n factorial times e. And then with the facts that we've discovered, we'll mop up and create a short proof proving that e is irrational. So first, let's evaluate b of n, right? Okay, well, b of n looks awfully similar to a geometric series, right? Recall that 1 plus r plus r squared plus r cubed plus yada 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 is 1 over 1 minus r, okay? That's the infinite geometric series formula, okay? However, um, b of n does not have a, like, one term. It starts at 1 over n plus 1, and then it's 1 over n plus 1 squared, and then 1 over n plus 1 cubed, etc, etc. So we're going to subtract 1 from both sides, right? So subtracting 1 from both sides gives us this, 1 over 1 minus r, minus 1, okay? Now, b of n, the ratio of the geometric series is 1 over n plus 1. We can see the first term is 1 over n plus 1. The second term, although it's 1 over n plus 1 squared, that's the same as 1 over n plus 1 all squared, and the same for the cube, uh, fourth power, etc. okay? So r for b of n, hold on, this pen is out, r for b of n is 1 over n plus 1, okay? So this then is b of n when r is equal to 1 over n plus 1 and we get 1 over 1 minus r which is 1 over n plus 1 minus 1. Now we just need to solve this um, complicated fraction. So we're going to multiply by n plus 1 in the top and bottom and we're going to get n plus 1 over n plus 1 minus 1 minus 1 n plus 1 over n minus, well, 1 is n over n because we're going to bring it to a common denominator and this leaves us with 1 over n, which is our answer. So b of n is a geometric series without the one term, so we subtract 1 from both sides. We notice that its ratio, r, is 1 over n plus 1 and then we basically just plug in the result to the infin infinite geometric series formula and we have our result. There is one caveat, uh, caveat to this, and that is that for the infinite geometric series formula to apply, the ratio r needs to be less than one. The absolute value of the ratio, I should say, needs to be less than one for the infinite series to converge. However, r is one over n plus one, and because n is a natural number, one over n plus one is going to be smaller than or equal to a half, right? And therefore, because a half is less than one, the series will converge, okay? So hopefully that makes sense as to how we've evaluated B of n. For the next part, let's show that A of n lies strictly between zero and one over n, okay? We get the left-hand side of the inequality almost for free because A of n is the sum of positive terms because n is a natural number and the sum of positive terms is obviously positive and therefore it is greater than zero. So left hand side done. The right hand side of the inequality we need to do a wee bit more work, okay? We're going to compare a of n to b of n and we're going to compare it term by term. Clearly if b of n's terms are greater than a of n's terms, right, then b of n is greater than a of n. Okay, that should be obvious. And that's called the comparison theorem. Looking at the first terms, they're actually equal. 1 over n plus 1 is equal to 1 over n plus 1. So put that to the side for now. The second term has a denominator n plus 1 times n plus 2, which is clearly greater than n plus 1 squared when we rewrite n plus 1 squared as n plus 1 times n plus 1. Okay? 
Taking the reciprocal of both sides of this inequality will flip the inequality sign, okay? That should be obvious because if three is greater than two, then one over three is less than one over two, okay? So um, taking the reciprocal of the inequality, I'm just gonna do it here, and we get that one over n plus one times n plus two is less than one over n plus one times n plus one. So we can see that the second term in A of n is less than the second term of B of n. And to be honest, the third term, the exact same thing happens. We can see the denominator of A of n is n plus one times n plus two times n plus three, which is obviously greater than n plus one times n plus one times n plus one, which is the denominator of the third term in B of n, which means the entire term the, in the fraction the third term in A of n is going to be less than the third term in B of n. And the pattern continues quite obviously, right? So we can see that every term in A of n is less than every term in B of n, excluding the first terms. And therefore, A of n is less than B of n. So we can just write this result down here. A of n is less than B of n. But what did we just calculate? We just calculated that B of n converges to a value of 1 over n. And therefore, a of n is less than 1 over n. So, a of n is strictly positive, and a of n is less than 1 over n. We've shown the inequality required. Good. Okay, so now we're approaching the crux of our argument. We're going to deduce that a of n is equal to n factorial times e minus the floor of n factorial times e. The floor is just a function which takes a uh, number x and returns the integer part of x. For example, if I asked you for the floor of 5.2, I'd return 5, right? So it returns the integer part when a, and it basically just forgets about the fractional part, okay, of a number. I've written the star of this out just to save time. So consider n factorial times e. N factorial times E is equal to N factorial times the series representation of E from the Maclaurin series, okay, of E to the X. So we have N factorial times one plus one over one factorial plus one over two factorial plus yada, 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 all the way to one over N factorial, remember N's just a number here, plus one over N plus one factorial plus all the way to infinity, okay? We're now gonna split this sum to the terms befo before and including 1 over n factorial and all the terms after 1 over n factorial, okay? So this breaks up into n factorial times 1 plus 1 plus 1 over 2 factorial plus 1 over 3 factorial all the way to 1 over n factorial. And then the second um, part of the split se uh, series is going to be 1 over n plus 1 factorial plus 1 over n plus 2 factorial plus 1 over n plus 3 factorial, etc. Let's look at the first part, okay? Notice that all the denominators are factorials that are smaller than or equal to n factorial, okay? So they're gonna be of the form n factorial over n minus k factorial. And I can guarantee you this will be an integer. And this is due to the recursive nature of the factorial function, right? Essentially, n factorial is n times n minus 1 times n minus 2, yada, 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 all the way to n minus k plus 1 times n minus k factorial over n minus k factorial. The n minus k factorials cancel, and we're left with an integer. For example, 5 factorial divided by 3 factorial. 5 factorial is 5 times 4 times 3 factorial. The three factorials cancel, and we're left with 5 times 4, which is most certainly an integer, okay? So, when distributing this n factorial into each term in the, in, into this finite series, each term is going to be an integer, so the sum of the terms is also going to be an integer, which I'm going to label as capital I, okay? So I represents this part, and it's definitely an, an integer based on the evidence I just gave. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, let's distribute n factorial into the, the, uh, the terms of the second part of the split series. The n factorial is going to cancel with every term in the denominator apart from n plus 1. Similarly, n factorial is going to cancel with every 
term in the second to, uh, in the second fraction apart from n plus one and n plus two. And in, in the third term, although I didn't write it out, it's obviously there, it would cancel with everything apart from n plus one, n plus two, and n plus three. What is that? It's one over n plus one, one over n plus one times n plus two, one over n plus one times n plus two times n plus three. That's precisely a of n, okay? Brilliant. So we're almost there. We've just shown that n factorial times e is equal to i plus a of n, okay? Where i is just an integer. Now let's consider the floor of n factorial e, okay? Which is gonna be the floor of i plus a n. All I've done is taken the floor of this bit and this bit because they're equal, okay? Now, here's the clever part. a of n is less than one over n n is a natural number, so 1 over n is less than or equal to 1, okay? So that means a of n is less than 1. Not only is it less than 1, but it's greater than 0. a of n is considered a fractional part. So if we look at the floor of an integer plus a number between 0 and 1, it just returns i, it just returns the integer part. That's literally what the floor function is doing. So essentially, i is the integer part, and a of n is the fractional part, because it's between 0 and 1. So the floor of i plus a of n is just i. So we get the floor of n factorial times e is equal to i, okay? Combining these two things, we get n factorial e equals the floor of n factorial e plus a of n. And if we subtract the floor of n factorial e to both sides of this equation, which we have found, we get precisely this statement. a of n is equal to n factorial e minus the floor of n factorial e. Almost there. Now, here's the final part. We're going to show that e is irrational, which is really cool because, in my opinion, we've not used any complicated calculus or algebra, really. We've used pretty basic facts such as the series definition of e, okay? And we've um, evaluated a couple series. So as is standard for a lot of irrationality proofs, we're going to do a proof by contradiction. Let's suppose that e is rational. So suppose e is rational, which would imply e equals p divided by q, where p and q are co-prime integers. That just means they share no factors in common. If they did share factors in common, well then we ought to just cancel the shared factors because it's a fraction, okay? So if e is rational, then we can assume e is equal to p divided by q. Let's work with this. So we have a of n is equal to n factorial p divided by q minus the floor of n factorial p divided by q. Okay, that was the result we just showed, but we've subbed in e equals p divided by q. Okay, but this holds for all natural n. e is positive, q is most certainly um, a natural number, so why don't we let n equal q? Letting n equal q, we get a of q is equal to q factorial divided by p divided by q, times, sorry, minus the floor of q factorial times p divided by q. Why have we chosen q? Because we're about to cancel the denominators. We get p times q minus 1 factorial minus the floor of p times q minus 1 factorial. And now we should start to see where this is going. P times Q minus 1 factorial is an integer. That means the floor of P times Q minus 1 factorial is also an integer. So that means this is just equal to P times Q minus 1 factorial minus P times Q minus 1 factorial. X minus X is equal to 0. So now we get that A of Q is equal to 0. But we originally showed that a of n, for any n, including q, 
because q is just an example of a natural number, is strictly positive. It can't equal zero. This is a contradiction. But if all our steps have been logical. The only time we made an assumption, which might not have been fair to make, is when we assumed E was rational. We reached a contradiction and therefore our assumption or premise was false. E cannot be rational. And there was the proof. So just to summarise what we did here, and this was uh, taken from a step question. A of n is equal to this bad boy, B of n is equal to this. We showed that B of n is a geometric series with the head cut off, so we get B, is equal, B of n is equal to 1 divided by n. We then showed that A of n was between 1 over n and 0. It's strictly positive because it's the sum of positive terms. We then showed a really neat fact that A of n is equal to n factorial e minus the floor of n factorial e. And then we supposed e was rational. We then showed, well, that would mean that A of q is equal to 0 if, if e was rational. But A of q cannot be 0. A of q is strictly positive. As we showed here, therein lies a contradiction. And thus our assumption was false. E cannot be rational. Therefore, E is irrational. I hope you enjoyed.